You can pick your friends, and you can pick your nose, but while your friends can't pick your nose, it turns out that your nose can, in fact, pick your friends. With over 400 million working scent receptors, our sense of smell is a lot more complex than you might think. It's the Ferrari of senses in comparison to our taste buds, which are more like the unicycle of senses with only five taste receptors. Most of the time, our nose's work goes undetected as it operates subconsciously to sense danger, determine edible food, and, it turns out, figure out whether or not Jill is going to become your BFF. That's because your sense of smell analyzes new people and can influence who you're friends with. And you're actually more likely to become friends with people who smell like you. But why? What's the reason that our smell is the way that it is? And what's the reason that the reason that our smell is the way that it is the way that it is? Well, over the course of human history, smell has acted as the first line of defense for eating. That is, our noses have long identified whether food is poisonous or spoiled or came from Taco Bell. When we inhale a scent, whether it be freshly chopped venison or Doritos Cheesy Gordita Crunch, the olfactory center in our brain takes charge. The center works by snatching molecules out of the air via olfactory receptors, or proteins located on exposed nerve endings deep within the nasal canals, of which there are 50 million in your nose alone. Each ending features a different receptor to detect specific scents, which then squirms and fires off a signal to the brain with information about that particular scent. So when you inhale the scent of a culinary masterpiece like, say, a Chipotle burrito, the olfactory receptors for salt, fat, and sugar are immediately activated, as well as the flavors that distinguish it from the festering spawn of live mass. These receptors can identify up to one trillion distinct smells, which came in handy for our hunter-gatherer ancestors who needed to quickly know whether a plant was the kind that would nourish you or the kind that would murder you. And for as long as humans have had noses, the olfactory center has also played a role in social interactions. Each person has a unique scent, a smelly fingerprint, if you will. In the days of human past, noses compared people's smells, and meeting a new person who smelled similar to you was a good sign that they were a safe person to interact or mate with. Body odors come from a number of factors that include diet, sex, age, genetics, hygiene, geographic location, and bacteria, and someone with a similar smell could indicate they, for example, ate the same foods and lived closer to where you were from, which meant they might be less likely to murder you. Today, you're still more likely to be friends with someone who smells like you because similar scents indicate familiarity and therefore security. Interestingly though, scientists still haven't been able to 100% sniff out where body odor comes from. Some argue that apocrine skin glands in the armpit that create BO, which believe it or not is the actual scientific term for it, are responsible for creating someone's unique musk. BO is created after these glands release odorless chemicals that are then fermented by skin bacteria. So a person's specific microbiome, not their actual armpits, becomes stinky and therefore identifiable. Others say that pheromones play a role in identifying potential friends and partners. Pheromones, chemicals released into the air by animals, are a well-studied phenomenon in certain animals, including bugs, who use them as a form of hidden communication and spray them on each other for mating rituals. But despite what this real listing for a $55 product titled Best Sex Pheromones for Men Attract Hot Women Now might claim, there's no real proof that people create or release pheromones to attract mates. What scientists do know is that every person's nose perceives scents differently, and it's more likely that our nasal attractions to other people is because of the past associations we have with smells. When we meet someone new, we sniff them subconsciously by sniffing our hand after shaking their hand or by leaning in close during conversation. Basically, humans do the exact same thing dogs do when they meet each other, we just do it more subtly, at least most of the time. And it's not just others, we actually subconsciously sniff ourselves up to 20 times an hour without realizing it. Scent memories have been well documented to arouse powerful emotions long after our noses have inhaled them, which could explain why we gravitate to certain romantic partners or even friends. If someone's smell is similar to a smell that you associate with positive emotions or memories, you're more likely to be drawn to them. So if someone accuses you of wanting to date someone who's just like your mom, you can retort that actually, you just subconsciously want to be with someone who smells like your mom, which is way less weird. But we're not here to talk about romantic partners. That's not relatable for this audience. We're here to talk about friends. A recent study from the Wiseman Institute of Technology in Israel found that similar body odors could predict if two people of the same gender would become friends. By placing two people in a room and only allowing them to interact via nonverbal body language, a synthetic nose detected pairs who smelled like each other. They found that similar smells predicted who wanted to become friends afterwards in 77% of cases. Bottom line is, smell is more powerful than you'd think in creating chemistry between you and potential friends, which might explain why you get along with some people so well from the get-go. It's not their sense of humor, it's their scent of humor. That doesn't really work, but you get the point. In fact, when you inhale someone's scent, the center in your brain that controls social processing lights up, and there's evidence suggesting that we can even distinguish between our friends' emotions just by smelling them. 
So remember, if you really want to connect emotionally with your friends, be sure to sniff them a lot. You'll love it. And if they don't, well, you'll be able to smell it. And if you want to learn more about the complexities of the human body, I highly recommend checking out Rebecca Sklott's The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which reveals the woman behind the world's first immortal cells that never stopped dividing and helped in some of the 20th century's most important scientific discoveries. I listened to it in one weekend while driving cross-country using Audible, which is so easy to use to listen to books anytime and anywhere, whether you're driving or doing chores or smelling a new friend. Plus, with their new included selection of titles like the exclusive words and music series and plenty of podcasts, an Audible membership is so much more valuable and gives all members a chance to discover new favorites and new formats. Basically, if you like learning or entertaining yourself through your ears, which is a good way to get learned or entertained considering how often your ears are free, Audible is the place for you. New members can try Audible free for 30 days, which gives you full access to their massive unlimited Audible Plus library and a free credit to get any other audiobook, which you'll keep forever. It's a pretty unbeatable deal, so click the button on screen, visit audible.com slash HAI, or text HAI to 500 500.